Thank you. I'm very happy to be here representing the Feingold Association, a nonprofit organization helping families avoid synthetic food dyes and other additives for better behavior, learning, and health. At this hearing on synthetic food dyes, I will present our view of the relevant research. This is a graph of double-blind studies in which children were subjected to synthetic food dye to see if their behavior deteriorated. These are called challenge studies. But it's not a meaningful graph, as results are completely scattered. Critics rightly say they're all over the place. This is a chart of diet studies in which children with ADHD were put on a fine gold type diet, eliminating food dyes and other additives. In most studies, more than half the children got better. Diet studies are often used to prepare children for a challenge study. The procedure is, first, recruit some children with ADHD. Next, put them on a diet free of food dyes and other additives. To do it right, make sure the vitamins, toothpaste, and medications are also additive free. About 70% will respond favorably. Now give them some food dye. That's your challenge. But how much to use? The Nutrition Foundation, an industry organization, told researchers the average daily intake was 27 milligrams per day. Nevertheless, many researchers used far less, some as low as 1, 5, or 13 milligrams. Look again at the challenge studies. Now, graph the percent of children reacting against the amount of food dye used in the study. It's not scattered anymore, is it? When little dye has little effect, researchers report that children are not sensitive to dye, so additive-free diets don't work. But wait, it was the challenge that didn't work. The diet worked so well, in fact, that 5 or 10 or 20 milligrams of food coloring didn't overcome it for most children. The more dyes ingested, the more people affected. Almost 40 years ago, Dr. Ben Feingold said, the reaction to synthetic dyes is pharmacological and dose-related. The 1994 Rowan Rose study verified it. But how much food dyes do children really eat? It's really hard to find out. Amounts are not listed on product labels, and companies consider it proprietary information. Well, I tried measuring it myself. 13 milligrams of powdered red food coloring in three tablespoons of white frosting looked like this, but more accuracy was needed. So the commercial red frosting was sent for analysis. I got the report. I did the calculations, and the actual amount of dye in three tablespoons of commercial red frosting is 58 milligrams. That's 58 milligrams of red 40 in one cupcake. But researchers had been told to give the children only 27 milligrams for a whole day. Maybe a toddler eats one cupcake. A teenager might eat two. Either way, they're getting two to four times the amount of dye that the Nutrition Foundation recommended for studies. Where are the studies on products like these? Or all these? Yes, children like the bright colors. But unfortunately, An increasing number of children are caught up in the growing epidemics of learning disabilities, hyperactivity, depression, and violence. These children need help. But medicines come with side effects. In fact, the FDA has mandated black box warnings for most drugs used for ADHD. 
Now there are actually many other good reasons why a child may have symptoms of ADHD. Some are medical problems that can be treated, but with so many possibilities, why even focus on food dyes? Aren't they only a small part of a large problem? No, we believe that they are a large part of a large problem, and this one the FDA can fix. Most synthetic food colorings are petroleum derivatives containing lead, mercury, and arsenic. They add no nutritional value and can lead to behavior learning and health problems. In Europe, synthetic dyes are already being replaced by natural colors. The same American companies providing products colored with natural colors in Europe won't do it for us here unless the FDA says they have to. Well, back to the numbers. Won't removing the synthetic food dyes really help only a small number of children anyway? Actually, as long ago as 1986, Dr. Stephen Schoenthaler published a study on 803 New York City public schools. The dotted line here represents the national average of California achievement test scores in the 1978-79 school year. And New York City schools were not doing very well. By implementing what was essentially the Feingold diet, the schools achieved dramatic academic improvement with scores rising almost 16 percentage points. And what's more, two-thirds of the children who had been over two years behind caught up to grade level. In several prison studies, a more natural diet led to a decrease in antisocial behavior by almost 50 percent. And 20 percent of inmates improved so dramatically that if they had had a better diet all along, they may never have been there in the first place. Here are 28 studies on food dyes. I know it's tiny print, but you can find them at www.diet-studies.com. Food dyes can cause a variety of symptoms. Headaches, stomach aches, sleep disorders, speech disorders, behavior problems, learning problems, neurodevelopmental changes, DNA damage, bronchoconstriction, sperm abnormalities, dopamine changes, serotonin changes, and loss of zinc. Until recently, blue number one was added to the tube feedings of patients unable to eat normally. In 2003, the FDA asked doctors to stop doing that since patients were dying, but not from their disease but from the blue number one, which apparently caused refractory hypotension and metabolic acidosis, and also, incidentally, turned their colons bright blue. The FDA told the doctors, quote, in vitro evidence that blue number one can be a mitochondrial toxin lends plausibility to the idea that blue one would cause these kinds of serious adverse effects. Hmm, what's a mitochondrial toxin doing in food? We are now in the third generation of Americans exposed to significant amounts of food dyes. These amounts are averages, not what any particular individual eats in the real world. But see how the average daily consumption has increased since 1955 from 12 to 62 milligrams, a five-fold increase. But we still wanted to know what real people are really eating. With the CSPI, we sent several products to an independent testing laboratory to determine how much food dye they contain. This slide shows how easily a child can consume hundreds of milligrams of dye in a day. Such levels of food dye have never been studied in children. Realistically, not every child eats like this every day. On the other hand, some may eat far more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Thousands of other products contain food dye. And this slide doesn't include the blue toothpaste, green mouthwash, and children's vitamins many children take every day. Does this mean these studies are irrelevant or useless? Well, no. It means you have identified that some children are so sensitive, even this small amount can affect them, with many more affected as you increase consumption. 
Children are exposed to a lot of harmful chemicals these days, but a food dye is one that can be controlled. If we don't, if we continue to expose American children to increasing amounts of synthetic food dyes, are we setting them up for a lifetime of frustration, illness, and failure? The FDA recently wrote that the food dye's effect on behavior was due to a, quote, unique intolerance and were not the result of any inherent neurotoxic properties of the dye, unquote. When we started the Feingold Association 35 years ago, we believed that too. Today, we disagree. After working with hundreds of thousands of families, we now see that it's not just the ADHD child who gets hyperactive when he eats artificially colored fun foods, but his normal siblings and his parents are also affected, just to a lesser or different extent. So we heartily support what Dr. Stevenson has demonstrated, that it isn't just a small select group of children who are affected by food dyes, it's all of us. We're honored to join with this eminent group of scientists to ask for a ban on synthetic food dyes in this country. Thank you.